Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, November 28th, 2016. It's approximately 7.15 p.m. Uh, first item on our agenda for approval, Arlington Public Art Youth Banners. Um, we have some correspondence here. Uh, is there anyone here to speak to this? If you could name an address for the microphone. For the record, yes. <laughs> for the microphone. Hi, uh, Martina Tanga. Um, my address is 45 Magazine Street in Cambridge. Thank you. Um, if you want to just say something about the project. Yes, please. Um, so this is the second year running um, that we're planning on um, doing this project. The first year was uh, this past year, and in um, April and May of 2016, along Mass Ave, we put up some banners. Um, so this is an uh, Arling uh, Arlington Public Art Initiative uh, to engage teens uh, in our community to create artwork that then is digitized and printed and hung up on banners along the street. Um, I have some photos from, from last year um, to show you, it was met with enormous success. Um, we had over 90 applicants and we selected 30 designs uh, that we then uh, did, you know, digitized and hung up on uh, as banners. Um, and it really brought the community together and gave uh, teens an opportunity to have their work on display, which we also then displayed the original artworks in the foyer of uh, the town hall. Um, we want to change the format a little bit this year and um, select um, about 20 and then install them just in um, the town centre as opposed to having them spread out along Mass Ave uh, in East Arlington, Arlington Centre in the Heights. And we're thinking of doing them across two different side-by-side uh, -side banners. Um, so that the design, um, they can work around this design concept of having them um, on both sides of the light posts. Um, but we already have a number of schools that are working on this project um, through the uh, really dedicated art teachers, and um, we are really excited. So I'm asking for approval for it to be up uh, March, April, and May of 2017. Yep. Mr. Greeley? Uh, move approval. Second. Um, if you don't mind, may I ask what happened to the banners from last year? So uh, the company that made them, Arlington Flag and Banner, has a really neat recycling um, uh. concept, and we've turned them into bike bags that we aim to sell. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> in those three months, I don't think we have anything that that would conflict with. You did work it out. Okay. On a motion by Mr. Grayley, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing Thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item two, Arlington Jazz Festival banners. Uh, is Mr. Fox, or name and address for the record, sorry. Aye. I never assume. Dan Fox, 50 Melvin Road. <clears throat> Thank you. If you want to just give a brief uh, explanation of your uh, <clears throat> fest jazz festival banner request. Yes, yeah, so we're going on the sixth year for the Jazz Festival. And last year was the first year we had banners, had one banner out, and I was a little late in the game yeah. <laughs> getting that done. So I'm planning a lot more in advance now. This is like gonna be, the festival is four days long in the end of April at a number of different venues around town, the final concert being in Town Hall. And um, I'd like to make two banners this year and put them up in at the corner of Mass Ave and Pleasant, if possible. And you said in April of next year. Yeah, so I'm hoping to get them up a couple months in advance of the festival, if possible. Okay, I only say that because I, if there's gonna have to be some coordination, because we, uh, Mr. Dunn, sorry. Some approval with uh, date coordination to be done by the Selectman's office. Second. Thanks, Marie. Okay, thank you. Um, 30 by 60 banners hung from the, the poles. Oh, yeah. All right, so with a little bit of coordination on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. Good luck Thank to you. both of you. Thanks for coming in. And next we have 
and a Colosi, Coloso, two sandwich boards for Sarcoma Foundation of America's Acapella Festival to belt out <coughs> cancer. Name and address for the record. Anna Colazzo, 6 Lawrence Lane, Arlington, Massachusetts. And we are here to petition the board, Jen Malatester, Jen Goodwin and I, to petition the board for two sandwich boards, which we would like to place on islands. They would be approximately, they would be two feet by three feet. They would be secured tightly to the poles so that in the event of storms, bad weather, which we do tend to have in January, they won't blow over and cause any problems. We have a picture of, um, this is a small version. This is a promotional, this is a, um, it's an acapella festival, um, the proceeds of which will benefit the Sarcoma Foundation of America and um, the Catherine Malatesta Scholarship Fund. Um, this is actually a bad rendering because my printer colors ran out today, but um, <laughs> this is what it will look like on the sandwich board. And then these are our promotional posters that will be around town as well. And the two places we were thinking was the intersection, the island at the intersection westbound of Mass Ave and Pleasant Street, and then the Mystic uh, Street and Chestnut. Chestnut Street. There's a little island there. We would attach them to the poles that were there, not blocking anything. We're asking permission to have them up for a week from January 13th to the 20th. The 20th is the evening of the Acapella Festival. Uh, in the event we sell out, we'll take them right down. <laughs> so we won't have to worry, and we will be sure to take them down the very next day. These will be custom made to fit around the poles, so they will be pretty sturdy. So we are requesting the board's approval for that. Mr. Kiro? Uh, move, move approval with the uh, good wishes that you do sell out. <laughs> yes. Second. Seconded by Mr. Byrne. Mr. Dunn? Yeah, I'm going to be the fly in the ointment on this one. Um, Town Council, do we have the legal authority to say this? I remember it's been an issue in the past. Sure. Uh, what the uh, board has the legal authority to do is grant the board's permission to use the um, public islands as the uh, body that controls public ways. Uh, what you'll need to do is follow up with the Zoning Board of Appeals to um, get the permission from a zoning standpoint to display the sandwich board signs. Okay. So you can grant approval subject to the further approval of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, then we will get right on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Uh, a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Byrne, with that clarification by my colleague, Mr. Dunn. Any further questions from my colleagues? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> Sorry, I just have a tickle. Uh, consent agenda, we have three items. The minutes of the meeting, November 14, 2016. We have a request for First Lights, Whittemore Park at Jefferson Cutter House, December 1st, and free parking Saturdays for holiday shopping, and also for approval cause and event, Arlington 2017 5K race, May 21st, 2017. Is there anyone here to speak about First Lights? I keep saying First Nights. Um, okay, is there anyone here who wants to speak to the uh, cause and event 5K race? Just name and address for the record, please. Um, Julie Vakic, 36 Epping Street. Robin Olinsky, 6 Beacon Place, Somerville. So we just wanted to update you. We had the second annual race last year. We it had great growth. We went from 650 runners to 1,000 runners. We sold out a month in advance. and. We raised more than twice what we had raised the previous year, $23,000, with more than half of that going to Arlington nonprofits. Um, so we want to do the race again this year. Um, so after speaking with the Arlington Police Department, we have come up with a few requests for um, the 2017 running of the race um, based on their suggestions um, for better traffic flow and safety for the runners and the spectators. So um, the first one of those requests is to restrict parking on Mass Ave the morning of the race from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. on the westbound side from Mill Street to Lowell Street. Um, in doing so, we would provide the barricades um, and will allow the runners and the outbound direction of the race to run in the parking lane in addition to the sidewalk so that they don't spill out into the road. Um, Arlington Police Department said that they would provide the signage for that. Um, and then the second request is to close the Minuteman path from Bow Street to Mill Street from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Um, where we turn onto the path got a little congested last year. Um, and this would sort of divert anybody who's not participating in the race from being on that section as the bulk of the runners are coming through. 
Um, so those are our two requests for this year. Um, otherwise, the police signed off on the plan. We're using their route. Again, all of the other details of the race will remain the same, um, but they are just in the interest of safety and making sure that everything goes smoothly, um, asked us to make those requests to you. Okay, um, first, oh, Mr. Greeley? Move approval. Move approval of three items for consent agenda, Second. seconded by Mr. Carroll. Um, any questions, Mr. Greeley? I, I wonder whether Mr. Byrne could represent the board and make it a 1,001 runners this year. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Yeah. I could drive the 5K, but... You ride a bike? Uh, you can actually <laughs> start it out if you want. I don't know if I want to see your car going down the bike path. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have permission to go. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi. Kevin? Yeah, Mr. Hi. Dunn? No, no. That's the wrong signal. <laughs> um, I'm, I guess two things. One is I don't think we have the power to close the bike path. I think it's the town manager. <clears throat> Second, I'm not sure I'd ask the town manager to close the bike path. I'm a little concerned about that one. Yeah, if I... May I? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I don't particularly uh, love that recommendation of closing the bike path just for fear of having <clears throat> bicyclists get to that point in the path and have nowhere to go to get to their destination. Um, if, if the board was so inclined, I would suggest if they would consider approving it but giving me an opportunity to work with the police department um, and the organizers a little bit further to make a final decision on that piece. That was my motion, Madam thank Chair. You, Mr. Curley. Um, and a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by, Actually, oh, Mr. I, Byrne, I'm sorry. Um, this is actually not about the race, but with um, the, the uh, parking spaces and uh, removing or making them free for those days. I'm happy to do it under this case. I think it will definitely help the businesses. I do think with the um, meters um, in and functioning that, you know, we will have to look further into requests. I know that we've been pretty lenient with those in the past. Um, I'm definitely going to support this, and I think this is a great cause, but I think um, we're going to have to consider um, the strategy around these requests moving forward. Mr. Dunn? I totally agree with you, Steve. I will say that and I, and one of the things I'm thinking about is that parking study, which said those hours, there's no one parking there anyway, mm. so it doesn't matter. Sure. Yeah. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, any further questions on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Carroll for consent agenda? If it's not a different all those item on the agenda we're talking about oh. now. Yeah. <laughs> if You're not all. what we're talking about, sorry. Mm -hmm. It's okay. If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Good luck. Oh, so no. you'll yeah, contact Mr. Next? Chapterlain at the I'll, town I'll manager. Thank, yeah. thank, thank, thank you. Did you have anything else, Mr. Chapterlain? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. If, uh, in regards to Mr. Burns' uh, point, I, I thought you were speaking about the race, too. Um, to, yeah, to, to be clear, the chamber's request is just for the lots, oh. not not for the street oh. uh, street spaces. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, but I That's took okay. a second there. Oh. Uh, next under appointments, agenda item 7, Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. Is it Marja Varia or Maga Varia? Marja. If you want to just come to the microphone. Say your name and address for the record, even though I have half of it. <laughs> Hi. It's uh, Margarita Varia at 37 Henderson Street. Okay, and you are here to be appointed to the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. Uh, do you want to just give a brief what your interest is, how you found this group, how they found you? Sure. Um, so, um, I have a, a background, a professional and personal background in the arts. I've worked in uh, film for 20 years now uh, as a screenwriter, producer, and now uh, impact producer for documentary films. Uh, I uh, also have a very long history, personal history of interest in the arts through my uh, family who have always been involved with artists, painters, sculptors, and all kind of things. So I grew up with that um, love and interest for the arts. Uh, in my uh, time in Arlington for the past seven or eight, seven years, I think now, I lost count. <laughs> um, I've naturally been involved in uh, meeting people working on, on this area in Arlington. I, two years ago, um, I started managing the Arlington Alive uh, Summer Arts Block Party uh, through ATED. Um, and that got me e even farther involved and uh, allowed me to meet more people in Arlington who work in this area. So um, I'm very excited to see Arlington being a place where the arts are welcome. I want to see more of that. I think it's for the better of everyone. I have little kids. I want them to live in that environment. So. Um, I ultimately 
knew most of the members of the commission uh, through different options. I'm also a judge at the Arlington International Film Festival. So uh, that's another branch how I met more <laughs> of those people. And um, uh, so they, they mentioned that they might have some openings. I thought about it. And I just, I'd like to help, you know, with whatever knowledge and time I have to make the arts a little better in town. So. Thank you so much. I'll be happy to move approval. I, um, I think it's an exciting time for this commission and I'm sure they're better off with you on it. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, move and approval by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Mr. Kiro, any questions? And this is another, this is a situation where I've, I've known Marga from her, her work with uh, ATED but um, as so often happens with these appointments, when we get to see uh, people's full resumes and we think we know them, we yeah. didn't know them, I never realized that the depth of, um, and, and length of experience that you have in this area. So I know that you'll be a great uh, addition to the commission. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Greeley? Yeah, thank you for your willingness to serve. And an audience engagement strategist. It's how to draw a crowd. It's just the new trend, it's a new thing. Uh, it's very big in documentary films right now, and uh, it's, it's new but very exciting way to really uh, bring these documentaries to a wider audience and to really uh, measure their impact. That's why it's called Impact Strategist. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. On a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any further <coughs> questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next, another appointment to the Board of Library Trustees. Lois Rowe. Is Lois here? Uh, my colleague's yeah. pleasure. Move we table. Moved by Mr. Grilly to Second. table, seconded by. Mr. Dunn, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. unanimous. Marie, excuse me, through you, madam. Did we hear from her? Or? She was gonna come, but we didn't hear otherwise. Okay. Maybe she th didn't know how expeditious we're going to be and we'll show up. Yeah, maybe yeah. she will. Anyone okay. sees they might know her. Uh, next we'll go to licenses and permit. Request, wine and malt license, JR Foods, LLC, doing business as Commune Kitchen, 203A and B Broadway. Richard Nidzuwecki and Justin Demers, co-owners, uh, either those gentlemen here or their representative. And if you could just, microphone, name and address for the record, please. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go first? Uh, so I'm Richard Nidzuwecki, uh, one of the owners of Common Kitchen. I'm Justin Demers, I'm the other owner. <laughs> Okay, and this is Mr. Dunn. Um, so you're gonna see, you're seeking to serve uh, wine and beer, is that right? Right. Have, um, what's your briefly serving experience? Like, have you run a restaurant or served or um, some, 20, excuse me, served wine or, uh, uh, before? I've been a chef in restaurants for about 10 years now, and I certainly haven't been on the serving end of it, but I've been in the world and have uh, been a big part of the hospitality industry in that sense. Um, so I think uh, we'll have a very limited menu. Um, it's definitely not a bar by any means, um, just something to uh, pair with our smaller food menu as well. Okay. Uh, then you'll get, you're about to get the speech that everyone up here has heard many times, but you haven't, or unless you watch our, sh um, you know, you watch us on TV. So uh, Arlington does, um, conducts operations to make sure that uh, restaurants are following the underage drinking laws. Um, Every year, I mean, every new restaurant passes just fine. They even pass just fine in their second year. What happens is when we have a small, most often, not every time, but most often, when you have a small restaurant who their first staff begins to change over and they hire somebody new and they forget to train that person and then that person serves someone underage. So the best solution that I know of to that is for you to have a, a training program and to make sure that everyone you hire goes through that training program and have a, like a written version of it and not let someone actually work on the floor until you actually have done that training problem. Because the way it'll go down will be, you'll have someone quit, you'll be shorthanded, you'll be crazy, you'll get someone to start, they can start really soon, you get them out there and then they serve and then you're lo gonna lose your license. Totally. Okay, thank you. Welcome to Arlington. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
<laughs> Was that a motion, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> move approval subject Sorry. to conditions. Second. Mo uh, moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by uh, Mr. Byrne. Um, and and uh, Mr. Grilly? Just curious, uh, there's no menu here. What I know you say a limited menu. Yeah, so we do all, um, everything is totally artisan by hand. Um, our experience in the last uh, four or five years has been in uh, artisan bread making. Um, and European <coughs> sourdoughs and stuff like that. So we make all of our own pizza dough by hand um, and a small menu of pizzas that are a specialty. Uh, we also make all our own sourdough and do open face sandwiches and pastries and goodies like that. But very small cafe bistro kind of. Even a small like bakery department. Yeah. When do you hope to small. open by? Oh, we're already open. open. We're we open. just don't have a, a license. Uh, the beer and wine. Yeah, exactly, no. yeah. Well, I haven't been there, but obviously I will get there. Thank you for choosing Arlington. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And just to piggyback on what my colleague, Mr. Dunn, said, um, we in no way can tell you how to um, oversee alcohol and training and things like that. But just as a suggestion, you know, sometimes we get in the packet, not that it's a requirement, but sometimes people attach their uh, training program, alcohol training program, whether servers, bartenders, manager will be TIP certified. One of the things that I really... Um, kind of stand by my family's in the restaurant business. I'm a court reporter, so from both hats and also thinking in terms of liability. Things that I've seen work with all restaurants, you know, all the way from, you know, really small mom and pop to a Chili's or a national chain is if your manager, if he or she has some sort of annual or biannual um, review, you know, right at the beginning of each shift, five, ten minutes, sit down and have the employee sign. Um, and I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm just saying where it has worked best, I have seen that, so. Yeah, sure. Well, sorry, we did draft something uh, that we would give to employees um, about checking IDs and over-serving, uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that, and I did the TIP certification training. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I haven't served in restaurants, or but I did work in stores where we sold mm -hmm. alcohol, so checking IDs and stuff like that, and you know, making sure they're not fake. Right. And a lot of it lies with your manager because exactly what Mr. Dunn said, I would say 90% of, you know, when restaurants appear before us, it's pretty much verbatim case in point, um, the scenario he out, um, laid out before you. So with that, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. We're really very friendly, I hope you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have a good night. Excuse me. Next, we have agenda item 10, request all alcohol license change of stockholder and change of manager. Y plus Y, Inc., doing business as Fusion Taste, 308 Broadway. Attorney Wei Jia. Yes, Tell evening. me how I should have said that, attorney. We are close. <laughs> good evening. Uh, Wei Jia is my name, my, with office in Boston. And uh, representing Y plus Y, Inc., we have two amendment applications before the board this evening. One is a change. Uh, amendment application for transfer of stock. Basically, uh, Mr. Ye's cousin is departing shareholder, transferred his 20% of the interest in the corporation to Mr. Ye, Jason Ye. So he's now a 65% shareholder of the corporation. And then uh, Xu, Jin, Xu Yinshen is going to be a new manager. Uh, that's a second amendment application, change of uh, manager. And Xu Yinshen is a U.S. citizen, and uh, she has been working for Y plus Y Fusion Taste for about 10 years, since 2006, as a bartender, waitress, mm -hmm. for, for the past 10 years. So we are here to request for approval of these two amendment applications. And approval, I'll Mr. move approval. Byrne, seconded Second. by Mr. Kiro. Mr. Sure. Dunn. <laughs> how's your training program? <laughs> uh, how's your training program doing? How's the training program? We're trading about a, like a bar, trading about a phone of winter waitress, and like a, the how to sell the, how to service the, about the, the alcohol, or the 21 years or the people coming, the customer coming. Um, to my knowledge, the, the two bartenders, uh, Shu and the other girls, been there working for many years. So, you know, they are very experienced. Uh, okay. There, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Caro for the change of stockholder and change of manager. 
Um, all any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All Thank those you. Oppose, opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, attorney. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Citizens Open Forum, did we have anyone signed in? Looks like Ms. Grant. Okay, uh, then I'll read. Okay, Citizens Open Forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noticed, noticed it should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or request. Name and address for the record, please. Hi. Um, hopefully uh, this, oh, this will take less than three minutes. Uh, I'm a parishioner of uh, St. John's Church in Arlington on 74 Blessing Street. And in the new year in February, uh, we expect to uh, have the first visit of our diocesan bishop, uh, oh. Alan Gates, to come um, to, to visit us. And my purpose here tonight um, is not only to thank you uh, for uh, all the wonderful work that the selectmen do, because today happens to be my 67th birthday. So, um, but to see if the <laughs> if the selectmen still issue um, uh, if they proclaim certain days uh, in honor of uh, uh, visiting dignitaries, because um, his visit is scheduled for February, and I figured, well, I might as well go down to the board of selectmen and see what they say if their policy has changed, or I need to start paperwork, or whatever. Hope you, that didn't take three minutes. You share a birthday with our chair. Hmm? You share your birthday with our chair. Oh, very good. It's also her birthday. <laughs> So we're st I think Mr. Byrne baked a pie in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Greeley? So uh, this is a big deal. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a big deal for us. Um, we've uh, been a congregation in Arlington for 140 years, and uh, we um, moved from where is now the Friends of the Drama to our present, uh, present location, and we have our first... Um, uh, a, a priest in charge who comes to us with uh, many years of experience. So we're hoping uh, as time goes on uh, to grow. Um, our early service has started to, uh, uh, to grow and we're getting back um, into the town. We hope to, uh, uh, we're on the short list with a food pantry to, to provide them, uh, to be one of the persons, places where they might provide temporary um, location until they their um, location f finalizes so we wouldn't expect you know a whole big turnout of dignitaries or anything like that but I was just thinking well we might be able to give a, um, a pleasant surprise and a, a photo op for everybody yeah. well uh, what we do is we we write proclamations and they're all done in the old English whereas whereas and now therefore and, uh, you know, I certainly believe that's something we could put together for you. Uh, what we need you to do is the young woman closest to you okay. who's younger than you. Did okay. you say 67? Uh, but Marie, uh, so, you know, I don't, but I'm, I'm willing to help you with that or I don't want to okay. uh, take over for the board. We could come and read it that day. You tell us. Okay. Or just give you the proclamation, a hand to this dignitary, whatever you'd like. We'd be okay. more than glad, and thank you for giving us so much advance notice. Okay. So thank just you very contact much. Mrs. Kropelka in the selectman's office. Okay. And we can help coordinate that. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe there's anyone else here for Citizens Open Forum. I believe maybe Mr. Byrne might have seen Ms. Rowe. Um, yes, come in. Lo Lois? Lois? Yes. Okay, uh, Mr. Greeley, could you move to take your... Uh, yes, I move that we take the appointment to the Board of Library Great. Trustees off the table. Moved so. by Mr. Greeley, seconded Second. by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. Aye, aye. aye. Those opposed. We now have before us agenda item 8, Board of Library Trustees. If you could just come to the microphone, name and address for the record. Hi, Lois Rowe. How are you? We, we're moving along. Now, the only reason we tabled it is we wanted to hold it to you guys. Absolutely, back. and I apologize no for, for, no for being late. If you wanted to sort of give us a brief some, you know, description of who you are, what your interest is, what brought you to the Board of Library Trustees, did they bring you to, <laughs> to the Board of sure. Library Trustees? Sure. Uh, sure. <laughs> so, uh, my family, my two uh, children are under the age of four, and my husband and I are heavy users of our libraries and very proud residents of Arlington. Um, so I have become interested in, in serving as a board member as a way to give back 
to the community they, that I care for and am deeply committed to. So I think I, I want to serve, <coughs> um, to support the libraries and also to advocate for the libraries um, so that it will continue to be an invaluable resource for our uh, residents and also for the community and particularly for the newcomers to our, our town and, and to the local community here. Um, as someone who personally <laughs> in my childhood has benefited um, abundantly from the local system or from the local library to be connected to the rest of the community. Uh, it's a critical resource for that particular purpose, I think, and so that's something that I also uh, will be, uh, uh, that's a cause that I would be supporting as well through our lo local library system. So really excited to be a part of this, uh, uh, this board. Um, awesome. <laughs> I'm happy to move approval. Moved by Second. Mr. Byrne, second, second by Mr. Kiro. Um, any further discussion? If not, on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you for your willingness to serve. And thank you for getting out of Lehman Brothers early. Sorry? No. <laughs> okay. Lehman Brothers is part of her background. Uh. What, was, what was that signal? I keep forgetting. No. Um, if I could, with my colleagues, um, uh, approval. I'd like to uh, take something that I think maybe a few people are here for. Um, agenda item 12, an update from our town council, Attorney Heim, status of the Mugar 40B um, application. Uh, attorney Heim or attorney, Mr. Chapdelaine? No, Attorney Heim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at the outset, I want to emphasize that there's no action for the board to take tonight. And I also know that many folks are very interested in all the developments uh, within this lengthy process, which is why this is on the agenda. Uh, in short, um, as the board will recall, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals voted uh, to assert uh, that the town had achieved safe harbor status under the uh, general laws and the regulations uh, pertinent to uh, Chapter 40B, uh, that the town was had one and a half percent of its developable land reserved for affordable, deed restricted affordable housing. Um, the developers appealed that uh, vote by the ZBA, essentially saying that the town uh, did not have sufficient grounds. They disagreed with our methodology and our ultimate uh, end uh, calculation uh, and uh, appealed that to the Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, they assert that we're somewhere in the 1.3 to 1.4% uh, range, so it gives you an idea of how close this is. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Department of Housing and Community Development on November 17th uh, agreed with the developers, <coughs> essentially uh, asserting that they don't believe that we're in safe harbor status, that we're at one and a half percent. And what's now before the ZBA tomorrow night is a decision as to whether to further appeal this. Um, typically speaking, uh, I've consulted with our special counsel and this attorney Witten, as well as a number of other town staff, typically speaking, uh, the DHCD process is essentially just two submissions. Our submission of the basis why, of why we think we're at one and a half percent, the appellant's uh, assertions as to why they think we're not. Uh, the Housing Appeals Committee is the next stage of essentially litigating this issue, and that's a much more involved process. It's a de novo review, which means that we sort of start all over again in terms of asserting the basis that we think we're at one and a half percent. There is uh, more forms of evidence that are acceptable in that format, including uh, testimony. It's a much more formal and robust process. So uh, nothing in the decision from DHCD is uh, surprising, uh, with perhaps the exception of the assertion that they didn't think that we had provided enough evidence. Neither myself or Attorney Witten are really sure what kind of evidence they're talking about um, and don't find this ass blanket assertion that we haven't provided enough evidence consistent with the regulations that they've adopted. Uh, nonetheless, um, it's ultimately up to the ZBA to uh, decide whether or not they uh, will continue to assert the 1.5% safe harbor status and whether or not we will appeal and essentially litigate this issue further in more depth before the Housing Appeals Committee. Uh, we haven't had a lot of time. They only have until December 6th to assert this. Unfortunately, uh, DHCD uh, only let us know on, I believe, Thursday or Friday, uh, right before the week of Thanksgiving. So we've had a limited amount of time and I'm grateful that the ZBA has scrambled to essentially find some time um, to have this basically vote. I mean, this is, I believe, the major substance of their agenda tomorrow. There may be some other things going on, but I wanted to keep the board apprised, answer any questions that you have, 
let folks know that we're, as far as the town is concerned, uh, continuing to believe that our posture, while aggressive, is in good faith and should continue to be asserted and is in keeping with what we've heard from this board and from a lot of residents of Arlington. I don't know if the town manager has anything to add, but again, this is up to the ZBA. They must uh, do it in an open <coughs> meeting, consistent with the open meeting law. They're a body. Um, so uh, either myself or Attorney Witten will be present tomorrow to answer any questions that they have, but I think our submissions, as well as the decision from DHCD, speaks for themselves, and we're hopeful that it'll be a relatively uh, quick hearing for them to make a decision. Mr. Joplin. I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. And um, all of us have had conversations um, <clears throat> with the town manager and attorney Heim, and um, b b basic modus operandi is um, we do have a town manager and, and two learned counsel that are guiding us uh, through this process. Um, I, in, but ultimately, um, I'm looking to the town manager and any expertise um, you need to sort of uh, continue on with this town strategy, adjust accordingly. Um, I have had conversations along with my colleagues. For me, the two glaring um, discrepancies that I read from DCHD, and, and we've discussed this probably too much, but the water body calculation, um, going by how they said we did it, the way we did it, according to state law, and I'm sort of reading from that, they're saying, well, you, you didn't do it right. So I, that, that's, but if ZBA chooses to file the appeal, I believe at the next step, we'll um, have an avenue to um, explore that and, and find out exactly. Um, my reading is state law dictates, you know, how you submit something to DCHD, and they said, no, you didn't do it right, you did it wrong, but um, we can't get the details on that and what they said we did wrong when I think we did it according to state law. Now, it could be the state law is confusing and a bit ambivalent, uh, but that's a, a story for another day. And then the other thing that really left me scratching my head and kind of frustrated, um, <clears throat> along with other issues that me, my colleagues and I have, is the, uh, the sort of contradiction on the calculations for developmentally disabled, uh, to me, we're really kind of hamstrung, whether it's in terms of HIPAA, state law, or anything else. It's, it's sort of we needed to submit information to DCHD so they could further verify. But under HIPAA and other laws, um, in order for us to get that information, the state agencies, entities that could give it to us say they can't. So that's something that if ZBA, um, Attorney Heim, am I encapsulating well, it, it, that wrong? If I, if I may add a little bit of commentary, if, if, if the board will allow me, I know that definitely, um, definitely. we're trying to proceed very efficiently tonight, but uh, I do want to mention uh, something about both the points that you've raised, uh, which is that these are not mistakes. Um, there's no, uh, it may be characterized that way by some folks, but these are not mistakes. These are uh, tensions in terms of how to read the regulations in harmony with the statute and what the town is essentially allowed to assert in terms of arguments about its status in supporting sufficient amount of affordable housing to allow us to retain autonomy about how we go about processing 40B applications. This is not about denying a 40B application. It is about retaining the ability for the ZBA's decision, whether it's to grant an application, deny an application, or to place conditions on an application for them to be the final word. This safe harbor status essentially means that they can't appeal their ultimate substantive decision on the permit to the HAC. Now, uh, some of the tensions that are at work here, the tensions over how to account for town uh, municipal water bodies, tensions over how to account for um, essentially um, DMH housing, um, are tensions that are not unique to Arlington and have been litigated, and these issues have not yet been resolved. So these are not mistakes in terms of the way that we're conducting calculations. These are uh, legal strategies. Some people can call them aggressive or not aggressive, but the point is we feel like these are good faith ways that we're trying to capture the reality of what the situation is in Arlington with respect to development and how much we have supported uh, and dedicated ourselves to affordable housing here in Arlington. Uh, the uh, as I said, the only thing that was unexpected uh, was the assertion that we hadn't provided enough evidence. I don't quite understand that argument. We've provided um, the evidence that we would think would be standard in any one of these situations. Obviously, Attorney Witten has uh, litigated many, many of these issues before DHCD and the Housing Appeals Committee. Uh, I think he was surprised to have that argument be part of this. The other issues were perhaps more anticipated. Okay, so I think 
and this is an update, sort of a beginning timeline in terms of, but everything is contingent upon Zoning Board of Appeals, ZBA meeting tomorrow night. So we're right now sort of in limbo in terms of how we proceed forward. Um, although I know um, the town manager and, and learned council have um, strategies for whatever path that is. I don't know if any of my colleagues have any questions. Um, Okay, if not, I'm, can I, can, yeah, I, I'm, sorry. Oh, you, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Barnes. No, I, I, I don't have a question. I, I do have a comment. Um, I, I'm definitely disheartened by the uh, DHCD's um, <coughs> insight that there's a lack of information just, you know, based on the application that Oak Tree filed was full, was, you know, I guess full of missing, mis or it was lacking so much information that um, it, it's really, uh, Disheartening to hear that, that that's what they're claiming for, you know, the work that we've done. Um, I, you know, is, is there, you know, anything that we can do to, you know, help the ZBA at this point to, you know, give them any guidance they might need or, you know, any support um, that you can think of? In my opinion, uh, the board has been clear that uh, it supports the ZBA uh, having whatever resources it needs to make, uh, to exercise its independent mm -hmm. judgment that essentially these are decisions that the ZBA has been tasked to make mm -hmm. and that this board uh, wants the ZBA to avail itself of any and all resources that it needs. And part of that is uh, the, the special uh, specialized legal knowledge of Attorney Witten mm -hmm. um, at this stage of the game. But uh, just to be clear, uh, if the ZBA chooses uh, to further pursue uh, the safe harbor status, the application itself will continue to be substantively stayed while that matter is uh, pending. If they decide not to appeal, then they would begin the process of actually hearing the substance of the application and start examining the issues that this board has talked about previously with respect to making sure that we do the expert independent analysis to verify their claims with respect to engineering or wetlands resources areas or any other matter, traffic studies, things like that. But so if the ZBA votes to continue the appeals process, those matters will continue to be on hold. If they decide not to appeal, then we will start the substantive uh, examination of the 40B application. Thank you. And uh, I'm definitely very grateful for the ZBA members and their efforts. Um, I know it's definitely not an easy time to uh, be a member of the ZBA, <coughs> and um, they're working quite hard, and that's great for the, all of us in Arlington. Thank you. Um, if not any further questions, Ms. <coughs> yeah. oh, thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. Okay, we will now go to agenda item 11 under traffic rules and orders. Uh, decision with respect to Arlington liquors, liquors, Attorney Hine. Yeah, briefly. I, 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 so I received a little bit of feedback on this. Um, I, 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 I note that I forgot to plug in the police report number. I apologize about that. I'll make sure I that that's did inserted. See that. <laughs> um, and that. Uh, I got some feedback about whether an individual feedback about whether or not the suspension was uh, for five days or more, or it was five days. Uh, in terms of having a decision that would meet the bounds of sort of clarity, uh, I just would say that any decision that involves a sort of suspended sentence or a sentence held in a, a punishment held in abeyance, um, it's got to be for a defined period. That does not mean, and I can make this clearer in the decision, that there would not be additional penalty on top of that based on whatever new violation there was. Um, and one thing that the board obviously takes into account uh, in deciding what the punishment will be for a violation is have there been any past violations. So again, what I'm trying to reflect there, and if it's not clear, I will certainly make any edits the board would like, is that my understanding is that uh, there's a one-year probationary period if there's another violation, they automatically have a five-day suspension along with whatever further uh, suspension would be merited by the second violation. Also, again, keeping in mind that there would have just been a violation previously. So that's what I was trying to capture. If the board has any further comments or edits, of course, I will make them. Um, if I wasn't clear on that, I apologize. Mr. Dunn? Uh, I move approval with addition of the edit of the police report number. Second. Is there a second. Um, uh, uh, motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Just one question, and I don't want to throw this askew or anything like that, but is it inherently implied um, that during the probationary period, if there is a violation and at the very minimal would be this five day suspension, similar to when we have um, 
meted out this punishment penalty before, it sort of has language, and, or maybe it's inherently applied that that five-day suspension would commence um, commensurate with the uh, night or day of the actual offense, which in this case being Friday. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I thought, I, uh, Madam Chair, I thought I had inserted that in there, but if it's not clear, I will double check and make sure yeah. that it's, that is reflected in there. It's there. It is where? Yeah. Uh, uh, under the section labeled order. Because I certainly Page understand seven? that that okay. is the board's, the board's Okay, intent. I looked at the beginning where it just said the violation. Okay, that's fine then. Um, and, and the motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, is that correct? Yes. Uh, any further questions from my colleagues? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you so much. Uh, agenda. You, just uh, aye. Mr. Byrne. Byrne. Just uh, you know, to um, thank Doug, you know, this was um, on my uh, motion. And again, an excellent, excellent job, Doug. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Greeley. Uh, for approval, referral to Transportation Advisory Committee, TAC, local speed limits and local speed safety zones. Our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so this is really just follow up on the board's vote uh, to refer these matters to town meeting. Town meeting voted affirmatively on, uh, on both of these on October 19th. Uh, and I believe I had said to the board, and then I uh, also said to town meeting on October 19th that I would then, if, uh, if they pass, suggest that the board forward these to TAC for consideration. Um, I, I think they, they are to be considered, um, you know, probably at least somewhat um, together but separately. Uh, and I also think that there's the possibility that the local speed limit, the statutory speed limit, could be a more broad recommended change as opposed to a process for considering street by street uh, changes. I think we've seen both Boston and Somerville change their citywide speed limits to 25 miles per hour uh, since this um, went into effect. Uh, so with that said, um, I would uh, very much like for the board to consider uh, referring both of these matters to TAC for their consideration. So moved. Moved by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Second. Mr. Carroll. Uh, any further questions, comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Carroll. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, unanimous vote. The much awaited anticipated discussion for the future Board of Selectmen meetings. This is where everyone gets out there. iPhone, smartphone. How far have we scheduled? Just December? Yes, correct. So we have January. We could do. Uh, Mrs. Kropelka, how do you feel about uh, since the warrant closes on? Friday the 27th is Monday the 30th sort of tight for you or does it not matter either way? So I'll hear from my colleagues. I'm just assuming it would be 9 and 23 or 9 and 30. Does everyone agree on 9? Yep. Okay. Um, what say you on 23 or 30? Does anyone have a... Which which one is uh, Martin Luther King Day? Is that... That's the, seven, the 16th. 16th. Yeah. 16 is Martin Luther King. So it would be 9 and 23 or 9 and 30. Does anyone have a conflict or a preference? Just one moment. No problem. Um, I lightly prefer the 23rd, but it's not a big deal. Does 9 and 23 work for the rest of the board? Yes. Okay, so January 9th, January 23rd, 2017. We now go to February. You give me just a sec to... We're in February. Okay. Um, I would put out either 6 and 27 or 13 and 27. Um, is, first of all, Monday the 6th in February. Uh, does anyone have a conflict or a previously scheduled engagement? That works for me. Okay. So definitely February 6th. And then our second meeting could be, um, how does the 27th look? Unless somebody guide me for some reason I should look at a different date. But I just figured... Stacking them week after week. Yeah, the 27th. So uh, February 6th and February 27th. We'd go into March. I guess I just put before us, um, Mrs. Kropelka, how do you feel about the last Monday in March? Is that conflict with you in any way? Well, it's not the only thing we might have to, depending upon the warrant article, if we uh, might have to have a meeting to hear the hear the warrant article hearings. Right. So you can book whatever date you want and then if we get a lot we'll just have to add another meeting. 
And do we know local election? Um, it's going to be April. 3rd. It is going to be April. Okay, four one. So how about thirteen and twenty seven? Oh, first of all, how about the thirteenth? Does that work for everybody in March? Um, works for me. My, my family is due to expand that last week of March, so whatever, whatever the date is, I may not be able to be there that Will hour. you Skype? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. But uh, do you think uh, it's wait, okay? Wait, wait, wait. Um, a birth of a child is more important than a meeting with the select well, it's, it's the second one. Aren't we your child? <laughs> yeah, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be here. Forget I said that. Right, I think you do like the 15th or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I only say the 13th because we're meeting February 27th, so yeah. can we do yeah, the, I think is that the 13th? Okay, so 13th and then um, the 27th of March? Sure. Uh, with the caveat that if for some reason the Warren articles are so voluminous, we do have the leeway of we have Monday the 20th and or if we have to meet on an alternate yep. night. And I think we should stop there. Sure. Uh, we should schedule just. Uh, oh, the for, organizational yeah. meeting in April. So the uh, Monday the 3rd, April 3rd. And that will be first agenda item organizational meeting. And then we'll stop there. Oh my goodness, you all are so efficient. And I lost my agenda. I'll go back to the paper form. Okay, so with that, new business, Mrs. Krup Mrs. Kropelka. I just wanted to remind you all that you have your invitation for the fire department holiday party this coming Friday night. I Ooh, think it's this not sure that I, I think, think it's either 6 or is it 6.30? It's a it's 7, 7 to right. 11. Okay, yeah, it's Friday night. That's, That's it. it. Attorney Hine? Uh, just a reminder that uh, warrant season is quickly approaching. I've already had one or two uh, people uh, provide the courtesy to the town of consulting with me about potential warrant articles that they'd like to file, and that's much appreciated because it helps the process go much smoother. If there's an article that's outside of the scope of the town's powers, I promise I'll try to let you know um, so that you're not wasting your time and that we can you know, all proceed efficiently. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Town Manager? Yeah, a few. few Quick ones. Uh, found out today that the uh, League of Cyclists has uh, awarded uh, Arlington as a bike-friendly community at the bronze level. Uh, I think we've been awarded that in the past. So I was happy to see that, and uh, you know, and also know that we're continue to keep getting better. So hopefully, we'll see that improve in years to come. Uh, wanted to mention that the week before Thanksgiving uh, was out at the Mass Managers Conference in Amherst, and the whole organization had the luxury of having our esteemed town council, Doug Heim, moderate a panel on the public records law, and he was very well received by those in attendance. Uh, and that was on the Thursday, and on the Friday morning, Sandy Pooler, the deputy town manager, gave a presentation on putting together the GFOA Distinguished Budget Service Award budget document, which was also very well received. So Arlington was very well represented, and I was very, very proud to sit there and Watch, watch them do it, not have to do it myself. <laughs> you said, see that guy up there? I hired him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and then finally, uh, just I want to say thank you to the DPW uh, for the great work they've done uh, making the Heights, the Center, and the East, I think, look great for this uh, upcoming mm. holiday season. Uh, they've done a great job. And I specifically do want to point out that um, in the East, some of the garland, the lit garlands, weren't working when they were plugged in. So Mike Rademacher himself, after dark, went down with a step ladder and individually hit the uh, the breaker switch on each of the little plugs and got the. He needed working. a ladder. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> so the That's whole awesome. the whole DPW team put it together, and I want to just uh, say thank you to them for making that happen. That's all I have. That's all. Mr. Greeley. Well, first I want to wish you a very happy birthday, thank Madam you. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Thank and you, Kevin. And it, it must be a time for birthdays in Arlington because. The longest serving med member of town meeting turned 90 on the 22nd. And with the board's permission, I'd like to invite Elsie Fiore to our December 12th meeting, um, uh, where uh, I would like to read a proclamation celebrating her many years of service here to the town, if that's okay with the rest of the board. Definitely. It certainly is. Thank you, Madam Chair. Shall we bring some wood and bark? Yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> well, how about she was a tap dancer for the USO in the Second World War? Wow. Yeah. She entertained troops dancing. I mean, I, it's amazing her history, but I'm putting together a proclamation. It'll be the first three page proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. No, I won't. I'm kidding. But thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Byrne? No new business. Thank you. Mr. Carroll? Um, just one thing. I just noticed on our desks here we have. Um, 
a request for assistance from uh, a couple of the officers of the Arlington Cultural Council. If I could on that, um, that is something we definitely have gotten correspondence on, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, have begun speaking with Mr. Chapterlain, and we'll probably report back at the next meeting. Is that the way you wanted to? Or? Well, I just noticed that the, the top one said, please take no action, which but is the, why I... The rest of them... Uh, I'd like to sort it out, J just because this is an issue that... A, a, well, a kind of a veritable if it, if, parade of... If, if it's appropriate and you don't mind, if I could ask uh, colleague Mr. Kiro to um, speak with Mr. Chapdelaine and or Mrs. Skripelka tomorrow and perhaps with Attorney Heim um, indicate to the board what our next step should be um, in terms of agenda item or exactly... Sure. I can read what the request is, but if you could come up with an action plan or plans sure. for recommendation, is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. But I, I agree with you on that. Is that okay, um, Mr. Me. Chaplain, Tony yeah. Hein, Ms. Cabelco? I didn't mean to cut you off on no, that. No, that's it's just, fine. That, I kind of had a previous comment. Abs absolutely. That's the, I just want to make sure that we respond somehow. Mm -hmm. That's it for new business? I, I believe so. Okay. Um, yeah. You're going to handle the appointment? Yes, yeah. yes. Mr. Dunn? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, I only have 17. No. <laughs> Actually, I have uh, just, first I want to, um, I, had the board polled on, on s several board liaison positions as well as as a result of this some may also um, become vacant uh, and or if there's anyone who's sitting on a committee I, on my apologies I probably should have done this sooner in my tenure um, but I was assuming sort of with you know CDBG and all the other committees if it ain't broke don't fix it but um, first I'd just like to announce two uh, selectman liaison um, positions um, and then hear from any of my colleagues um, if as a result of that another position on another committee may remain open and and that's for any board member to say that and then lastly if if not tonight if you know during the course of the next two weeks somebody feels that um, there's a committee they're on and they've, they've done everything they can do and they'd like to go to something else let me know but I'm not suggesting anyone should which is why I didn't do this right at the very, very beginning when I was chair. First, I would like to um, announce that Mr. Greeley will be the Board of Selectmen um, liaison to the Town Day Committee. I am going to do my best to join Mr. Greeley Thursday. What time is the meeting? This is 12 o'clock here um, at, at, at Town Hall. Um, it, um, so, Mr. Greeley, will, will you accept that? Thank you. This meeting Thursday is to kind of review this past Town Day if any of our colleagues have anything you'd like to say about this past town day or ideas for next year, please let us know. So um, direct that to Mr. Greeley. Um, second, we had a request for a council on aging appointment. Um, and there was um, interest by um, several of my colleagues, but um, I've asked Mr. Kiro if he would um, step into and f yeah. fulfill that request from the council on aging. Mr. Greeley had pointed out to me that um, you have already been working um, on various efforts through the Senior Center and Council on Aging, so this sort of seemed like a nat natural, I don't want to say marriage, but um, if you could, if you could accept that. I'd be, I'd be happy to accept that. I, I, I would, um, however, request that to be, um, to rotate uh, at least one of my other responsibilities out, though. Um, I, I feel, you know, the one that has taken the most attention is, has been, um, uh, a Ted, and I'm not sure that I could give the, the proper attention that's needed to the COA um, liaison appointment. Um, saying with that, if there's another colleague who is you know, willing to take on that liaison spot. Okay, so we would now have the A Ted position open unless somebody here tonight has indicated. Well, I'm, I'm willing, but I think Mr. Dunn is also interested. Are you also interested? I'm definitely willing. Um, <coughs> I wonder if would we appoint both of us because I know I can't make all of the meetings and whether we I can do that. stay in touch and trade yeah. off in terms of so hopefully we could each. Definitely, because that, that committee yeah. is doing a lot of work and has, you know, many so meetings. tied up till April, if you can. Uh, all right, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, that's all right, because yeah, Dan no, said he's interested good. in I it. think that's better, especially okay. for that position. Is that so? Um, I think there is one meeting uh, this Wednesday, which I have a few things to wrap up with, and it's probably appropriate for me to, to let go. them know. At yeah. that point, let them know that there's a transition. 
But uh, in terms of representing the Board of Selectmen with Arlington's Tourism and Economic Development, ATED, yeah. uh, Mr. Dunning Greeley um, will do Sounds that. Sounds good. Um, any comments to that? Yes, that's fine with me. That's fine with me. Okay, and then anything else? On, right now I'm going to leave all the other committee appointments as they are. Um, if anybody um, decides they uh, want to move on to something else, but please don't. <laughs> but if you do, let Mrs. Krapelka know. With that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn by so moved. Mr. Burns, seconded by okay. Mr. Kuro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, we are adjourned. Aye.